software testing a pool of knowledge and endorsement which has always been a career option to many is now a point of discussion so in this session let's compare the two major types of software testing based on the user requirements that is the functional testing and non functional testing hey everyone this is vaishnavi from edureka and i welcome you all to this edureka's youtube channel before proceeding further let's take a look at the topics we'll be covering in this session first let's start the discussion by understanding what is software testing and then understand the concept of functional and non functional testing which are the two major types of software testing after that let's try to list out a few parameters based on which we'll compare the two types of testing moving further to the discussion let's take a look at the different types of testing under functional and non functional testing and finally we'll wrap up this session by understanding the use case of the same so without wasting much time let's start the module by understanding the first topic what is testing testing is a buzzword in the software industry until the 1980s the term software tester was used generally to refer to any tester but in the recent growth of technology it is seen as a separate profession talking about the goals in software testing different roles have been established such as a test manager test lead and so on testing is basically a process to evaluate the functionality of any application and to find out that all the requirements are met in order to run the process defect free the primary purpose of testing is to detect the software failures so that it is easy to find the defects in the process and correct it it provides the objective some information about the quality of the software and the risk of its failures to the users talking about the scope of testing it decides what is supposed to be done to the system and do what is required to be done so these are the major reasons why testing is widely used in different organizations to improve the rate of production so this is about software testing now let's take a look at the two major types of software testing that is functional testing and non functional testing and try to analyze the process that takes place in them first let's learn about functional testing functional testing is a type of software testing where the system is tested against all the functional requirements or specifications like the technical details data manipulation and processing and other specific functionalities you might think functional testing just refers to testing a function or a method of your module or any class but that's not what it does functional testing helps in testing a slice of functionality of the entire system functional testing is also a type of black box testing that holds the test cases based on the specifications of the component under test now you might ask what is black box testing black box testing is a method of software testing which helps in examining the functionality of an application without peering into its internal structure or the implementation process this basically means that the user will not know the internal process that takes place while testing a case so this type of testing also checks whether the application works as per the customer need so this is about functional testing now let's move further and understand what is non functional testing non functional testing is another type of software testing which is used to check the non functional aspects of a system like the performance the usability readability and so on it helps in testing the readiness of the system non functional testing defines the way a system operates rather than pointing out the specific behavior of the system this is totally in contrast to the functional testing which tests against the functional requirements that describes the functions of a system basically non functional testing is done to check and evaluate all the non functional parameters which are not covered under functional testing non functional testing is equally important as functional testing guys all the non functional parameters such as speed scalability security reliability efficiency of an application is tested under the non functional testing so now that you've understood what is functional testing and what is non functional testing let's move on and understand the parameters based on which we'll compare these two types of testing so we'll compare them based on these particular parameters starting from their objective we'll discuss on how these two testing types differ based on their objective 
and then we'll move on to their area of focus or where exactly the testing is done and once we're done with this we'll talk about their ease of use stating how easy is it to run a case in functional and non-functional testing after that we'll talk about their functionality where we'll understand their main features and finally we'll compare them based on their execution process so let's start comparing them based on their objectives first functional testing is carried out to verify or validate the software actions like the login functions and so on whereas the non functional testing helps in verifying or validating the performance of the software that is how the system performs under a given situation or condition so these are the objectives of functional and non functional testing now let's move on to understand their area of focus functional testing mainly concentrates on the user requirements that is what are the functionalities that takes place in the process and so on whereas the non functional testing mainly concentrates on the user expectations that is how the system interacts with the user how the system is built and how you can customize your functionalities so the functional testing basically provides the answers to the what functions here whereas the non functional testing provides answers to how functions here okay so this is about their area of focus now let's understand their ease of use functional testing finds it easy to execute the black box testing by black box testing i mean the internal structure or the implementation process is not known to the user so the functional testing supports this kind of execution whereas the non functional testing finds it easy to execute the white box test cases in white box testing the internal structure or the implementation process is known to the user that is the user can actually see the process that takes place in the system okay so this is about their ease of testing so now let's move on to understand the functionalities functional testing helps in describing what the system should do whereas the non functional testing describes how the system should work okay so i think you've already understood what this means like i've mentioned earlier functional testing provides answer to all what functions in the system whereas the non functional testing provides answer to all the how functions in the system so this is about their functionality now let's move on to understand their execution process functional testing is executed before the non functional testing i think you guys have figured out how the execution process takes place right functional testing helps in defining the test cases okay so this is the reason why the execution of the functional testing happens before the execution of the non functional testing whereas the non functional testing execution takes place only after functional testing that is only if the test cases are defined you can proceed further and test them according to your wish so now that you've got an idea of how functional testing and non functional testing work Let's take a look at their types. Software testing is broadly classified into two major types that is functional testing and non-functional testing. Let's start the discussion by understanding the different types of functional testing. Functional testing comprises of the unit test. Unit test is basically the first phase of testing. That is you can prepare the test cases, review them, rework on them if there are any errors and create a baseline for the test cases. This particular type helps in testing the units of the test case. So this is about unit testing. Say if you don't want to test the system unit wise and you want to integrate the entire process and then test, how would you do that? We will use integration testing where the integration testing is the level of software testing where the individual units are combined and tested as a group. So this is about integration testing. Now if you want to test the entire system on a whole and not integrate the process and then test how would you do that we will use system testing system testing is actually a series of different tests whose sole purpose is to exercise the computer based system okay so this helps in testing the system on a whole now say if you want to run the test scripts on another system how would you do that we will use interface testing Interface testing verifies whether the communication between two different software systems are done correctly. Okay? So this is about interface testing. 
Now, say if you want to change a particular piece of code or if you want to add a few more commands to the test cases, how would you do that? We will use regression testing. Regression testing is a test to confirm that the recent program or code change has not adversely affected the existing features. That's what you want, right? You need to have a test scripts which doesn't change even if there are modifications. Okay, so this is about regression testing. So now let's try to understand the last phase of functional testing that is user acceptance testing. User acceptance testing helps in handling the real world scenarios according to the specifications. So this is about the different types of functional testing. Now let's move on to understand the different types of non-functional testing. Let's start by understanding the first type that is the documentation testing. Documentation testing helps in estimating the testing effort required, the test coverage and how to track the requirement. So these are the particular features of documentation testing. Now once the documentation process is done, say if you want to install any particular software to your system and what if there is a bug in it, how would you test it? We are going to use a type of non-functional testing called installation testing. Installation testing checks if the software application is successfully installed and it is working as expected after installation. So this helps in simplifying the test cases during installation. Now say if you want to check the performance of a system, how would you do that? We will use performance testing. Performance testing is basically considered as the heart of testing. Let's understand what is performance testing. Performance testing is used to ensure that the software application will perform well under any expected workload. That is the main objective of testing, right? To check if the system performs well under any workload. Like I mentioned, performance testing is the heart of software testing. So now let's try to understand the different types of performance testing. We'll start with understanding the first type load testing. Load testing is used to monitor the response time and staying power of any application when the system is performing well under heavy load. Okay, so this is about load testing. Now let's understand what is stress testing. Stress testing is used to determine or validate an application's behavior when it is pushed beyond the normal or peak load conditions. So stress testing is used under these conditions. Now what is endurance testing? Endurance testing involves testing a system with the expected amount of load over a long period of time to find the behavior of the system. Now what is spike testing? Spike testing is carried out to validate the performance characteristics when the system under test is subjected to workload models and load volumes. So this is about the different types of performance testing. Now let's move on to understand another type of non-functional testing that is reliability testing. Reliability testing checks whether the software can perform a failure free operation for a specific period of time. It also assures that the product is fault free and is reliable for its intended purpose. So this is about reliability testing. Now let's try to understand the last phase of non-functional testing that is security testing. Security testing helps in determining that its data and resources are protected from possible intruders. That's the whole point of testing, right? Security is the key to software testing. So this is about the different types of functional and non-functional testing. Now let's try to take a look at their use case. Let's understand the use case of functional testing. Functional testing helps in checking the login functionalities. Say for example, if you want to log into a particular web page and you want to sign into an account, you'll be asked to fill a few details like your name, your mail ID, create a new password and so on. So these particular fields can be checked using functional testing. So this is one of the use case of functional testing. Now let's understand the use case of non-functional testing. Non-functional testing helps in customizing the test cases according to the user requirements. Say for example, after logging into a web page, you want the particular page to load for a few seconds and then pop up. So this kind of customization can be done using non-functional testing. And say if you want to add a wait command 
and want to wait for a few seconds in the dashboard, you can do that using non-functional testing. So this is about functional testing versus non-functional testing. If you want to learn more about software testing, don't forget to take a look at the Edureka's YouTube channel and check out the software testing playlist. Thank you for watching this video. Happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!